bring in my guy, David Pollack. Uh, he's such an stud, such an awesome analyst, has been for so long the three-time All-American at Georgia. Any, if you're a three-time All-American, all that tells me is you didn't go pro early enough. That's all I know. <laughs> David, it's Ross Tucker, man. Really appreciate the time. How are you a three-time All-American? Why didn't you leave school early the year before? Uh, I could have uh, wanted to stay to win a natty, but it didn't work. Um, <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't quite as good as these classes, man, that they've had the last several years. But um, I was a freshman All-American, too, but that doesn't count. Um, but the cookie debate is amazing. I don't eat cookies ever, um, but I always was the, the philosophy of the softer cookies you put in the microwave and you heat them up. And then the harder cookies, yes, you can. Di- I think you dip in milk. But y'all, y'all ever heat the soft cookies up? So just to make them warm. Yes. Yeah. Just okay. So let's talk about that, by the way, because I noticed the last couple of years on game day when they would bring food out, you wouldn't eat it. So no. like, let, let's talk. So so what is this about? I, I know you're ripped, and I know you're. Is it just uh, discipline? Is it overall health? Is it just you want to make sure you have the six pack abs? Like, what are we doing here? All of the above. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's. I, I eat my. I eat the same food every single day. Um, and I'm very strict. I don't, I don't touch, you know, uh, fried foods. I don't touch alcohol. I don't touch sweets. I haven't in ever, um, in a, I haven't touched sweets in like 15 years. I haven't touched alcohol, um, which I felt like twice in my life, but like just very regimented, very strict. I want to know what's going in my body. Okay. Ross, listen, we can both agree on this. We've both been fat. <laughs> OK, we've both been large. I'm just not trying to go back anymore. And I got to be very healthy in what I choose because my metabolism ain't like a lot of people's. All right. So see, see, this is what happens on the Dan Patrick show. I have like all these college football questions, but now I have to know what you eat the same thing every day. Because, by the way, I am very similar to you. I eat pretty much the same thing Monday through Thursday. But then I travel so much on the weekends, I'm going to yeah. enjoy the city I'm in. Like when I was in Chicago last weekend, I got a steak at Gibson's, right? Like I'm going to enjoy that. And But I have to be disciplined during the week to be able to do that and not go back up to 300. So what do you eat every day? Well, food is fuel to me. Um, but I do a, a carton of egg whites oat, and oats. Um, that's always my breakfast, which I eat like around 12 or one. Then I do uh, Greek yogurt and blueberries is always my next meal. And then at night, my wife always makes um, some form of like fish, chicken, uh, steak with vegetables. So that's that's you. That's my every day uh, throwing a pro- throwing a protein shake in the morning, a protein shake at night. And that's my everyday uh, lifestyle. Talking with the guy, David Pollack, who, as you can tell, if you're watching on Peacock, is absolutely shredded what do you weigh right now uh 240 yeah he is a yoked 240 speaking of egg whites let's dive into some of this college stuff you know what's funny by the way david you're the perfect person to talk to about this all the talk about the college football playoff and the four best teams you know i have a betting podcast and i was asking the guy do you know that georgia would have been favored on a neutral field against all four of those teams So the whole notion of Alabama getting in over Florida State, because we got to do with the four best teams, that was always false. That that was never the truth, because it wasn't the four best teams, because I still think Georgia might be the best team, David. Yeah, and and I'm with you. But but the the committee's been very consistent, by the way. They don't put in the four best teams. They always put in the four teams that can justify the best. That's what they've always done. That's what they're always continue to do. Um, but the cool thing is, Ross, in the future, we got 12 teams and we're guaranteed to have the four best when we're picking out of 12 and, and it's going to be decided on the, on the field, which will be, uh, super, super cool. But Georgia's man, they're just, they're so talented, uh, banged up at the end of the year, played their worst game against Alabama, Alabama, uh, played really good. Georgia, uh, you know, caught some, had a bad turnover inside their own, uh, 10 missed a field goal and, and lost by three, you know, and, and, and that was including with some guys that were dinged up. So, yeah, I think a healthy Georgia team was, was the best team in the country. But we've said that a lot about a lot of different teams, and you got to earn your way there. And look at Washington, man. How freaking cool is it that Washington, who, by the way, their last 10 games, Ross, their last 10 wins they've won under 10 points. Like, hasn't been dominant, hasn't killed people, continued to win, continued to get rewarded, and now they're playing for a dang national title. It's unbelievable. And I think that's one of the things that jumps out to me the most. Usually, I feel like when you get to the college football playoff, 
the teams that have been undefeated, it's like they're almost due for a loss as opposed to like a one-loss Bama or a one-loss Texas. But that's not what happened. I mean, we, we got the two undefeated teams, and they've both beaten everybody they faced all year. I think it makes Monday night even better. And I think the fact, whether it was Michigan or Alabama, David, I really feel like one way or the other, there was a team that people were going to root against, right? So Michigan, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's the Harbaugh thing or the cheating thing or whatever. Alabama, it was just people that thought it should have been Florida State instead of them. So I feel yeah. like a lot of people don't even know that much about Washington that are going to be rooting like heck for Washington Monday night just because they don't want Michigan to win. Uh, correct. But first of all, Ross, hold up now. It ain't just because of the cheating scandal. Everybody would pull or Bama. It ain't just because everybody would be pulling against Bama regardless. Like people <laughs> aren't pulling for Bama. The, the world wants Bama to lose. I mean, the cheating scandal pissed people off and made people cheer against Michigan. But when they played Alabama, everybody still cheered for Michigan because they wanted Alabama to lose just because they've had they've been so successful. But no, Washington, underdog story, underdog quarterback, underdog coach. Like, there, there's nothing better than this. And here's the thing. Like, we talk about a, a day and age where it's all about recruiting. It's about getting the five stars, the blue chips. Washington's best players are three-star kids. They're guys that have been developed, that have been around for a little while now with Penix being in his second year. Their left tackle, who's – by the way, what are the most important positions in football, Ross? We're going to go quarterback. We're going to go edge rusher. We're going to go offensive tackle. And, and I'll say nowadays football, you're going to go wide receiver. Guess what Washington has, by the way? The Mr. Underdog. They got four guys that will go in the first round probably in the, and one in each of those spots. I mean, think about that. Like, they are really good where it matters. If, if Ohio State, Alabama don't have those great quarterbacks, when, when they have when, when the elite teams have the elite quarterbacks, it's over. It's a wrap. When they don't, teams can get beat. And now you see Alabama, they looked really fallible. You see Michigan win. But how about Monday night, the contrast of styles? We're going to pitch it all over the yard. We're going to hit you right in the face if we're Michigan. So which style wins uh, a true blue blood versus a true underdog? I, I think America is definitely going to be with Washington. We're talking with longtime college football analyst and former Georgia All-American David Pollock. You know, I haven't heard you talk about this, David, or asked you this. How much does the Michigan cheating thing bother you? It bothers me. It, it bothers me just like the Patriots spygate. You know, like it bothers me because I think there are lines. I, listen, we know this, Ross. There's cheating in every level. And it's your job to to change your signs up. And it's your job to guard against it, you know, as much as possible and cover what you can cover. But there's also a line that you can't cross. And there's also a line. Like when you start filming different things, P Patriots cheating, like big time cheating. Uh, when you start doing taking it to that level, I think it becomes it becomes a different animal. And, and I think Michigan definitely took it there. And listen. You got one guy that takes the fall. Harbaugh gets suspended. To their credit, the way they've handled it has been amazing. And it's been a battle cry, right? It's been us against the world, and and they've kept it together and somehow haven't you know, lost focus. But, no, it's definitely disturbing. It, to me, it's just like the spy gate. It's taken too far. There, there, are, there are boundaries and there are rules that are strict. Listen, there are people every offseason that get hired from different schools for that purpose, to get their hand signals, to get their operating procedures, to understand what they do. Um, but to film different things and to do it to the extent that they did it to is, is unacceptable. You know, it's interesting Monday night, David. My initial reaction would have been that I think Michigan's just too good up front and can beat up Washington up front. I don't think that's the case. Washington's better up front than I realized watching them against Texas. Yeah, I mean, they, they got, a, again, an, an offense, a left tackle that's going to be drafted in the first round, an edge rusher that leads the nation the last two years in pressures. So, They've got some guys, man. They, they play physical. They play tough. They play hard. They play sound. Washington dealt with a little bit of injuries at safety. They were on their, like, fifth safety at one point. They've gotten healthier in the back end. They've got a really good corner in Prince, like a really good corner. So uh, it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good defense. It's not a great defense. Uh, Michigan's pass rush was insane versus Alabama. Um, if they rush the passer like that and they can get pressure on Penix, that's the way – you can absolutely beat them. I'll be interested to see how how Washington – Texas had a lot of success running the football, Ross. Like, I think Michigan obviously is set up more to do that. I love the way Michigan finished that game against Alabama. Like, 
when it was not cutting time and it was time to like to win the football game, run, run, touchdown. Like, and they played the physical smash mouth. So I think it is contrasting styles. The key to me will be Penix Jr. And it will be his ability to do what he did against Texas. When your offensive line gets beat, specifically in the interior, and they get beat, can you make a guy miss and deliver a strike? Because he did, man. Like, he consistently would. He's not a freak athlete, but he's got enough of that shake to step up and throw it. And when he throws it, you just – that thing comes out hot, and it comes out right down the field, 20-plus yards down the field. He's the best in the country, and it just drops in a bucket consistently. Just – it's unbelievable. So it'll be contrasting styles for sure. Yeah, I'm curious just your thoughts on sort of the state of college football right now. It's interesting because – with all the transfer portal stuff and the NIL stuff, and then you have all these bowl games where we don't know who's playing, who's not. But then I was looking at the ratings for the bowl games. It doesn't seem to matter. It, it, it really doesn't matter. It's like, which by the way, is a whole other conversation. People really are just rooting for the uniforms, right? Like it doesn't yeah. matter necessarily who's in those uniforms. Has it taken away your love of the sport? Because I know you love college football. Has all the portal NIL stuff hurt your affinity for the sport or not at all? Not at all. Um, I, I'll be honest, though, Ross. When it started happening, you're like, dude, what the heck is going on? Like, this is strange. This is weird. Um, but, man, the college football is just the pageantry and the, every Saturday and just the traditions. And, 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 listen, I'm from the South, right? So, like, this is not like a, a a fandom thing that's one generation. This is like generation upon generation upon generations. Like grandpas going to games with their grandsons and their and their son. Like it's a family affair, man. Like it just it runs so much deeper. And you could take D three guys and get rid of all D one guys, and, and you could put them in those D one uniforms, and and all those guys could go away, and everybody would still cheer for their squad. They would still cheer for their team. Like. There's just something about, and listen, I'll be honest, you know, I got canned this year. So being the first year being on the couch, like it was fantastic to have a Saturday, <laughs> like to watch, to just sit there and watch it all, like to see it, to see the different, uh, the different games and just to follow it. It was cool, man, just to be a fan. And um, listen, college football is, is healthy because all the, the generations of people that, I'm an Ohio State fan. Like, I'm a Georgia fan. I'm a Clemson fan. My granddaddy had tickets. I go. The stadiums are packed. The atmospheres are crazy. Um, does it lead more craziness and our coaches losing sleep because, because the NCAA has done a horrible job of legislating the NIL and legislating the transfer portal? Yes. Does it lead? Does it give some people headaches and does it tick them off? Yes. Are they still going to wear their colors and watch their team on Saturday? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if, if anything, it's weird because just seeing certain kids even go to the transfer portal this week, it's almost has like an NBA effect where it's like creates this off season of excitement and people it's, it keeps college football almost in the news more often. If that makes sense, it's, it's really strange. Appreciate the time, man. Always good to see you. I mean, every once in a while I do just a little ice cream. No, like a little never. bit of ice cream. Never. Hey, here's the thing, Ross. Know thyself. Your boy is not a one bite kind of guy. Okay. If one bite goes down, 12 bites, 20 bites, 30 bites are going down. Don't need it, bro. Great to talk Food with you, man. Thanks, thanks so much for coming on the show. See you, brother. By the way, I, I, 